guys, my name is Melissa. Today we're going to talk about how you can budget your money as a beginner to help you manage your money and grow your savings. Different people like to use different methods. Some like to separate their fixed and variable expenses. Some like to categorize their expenses. And some like to use the 50-30-20 rule that was popularized by Elizabeth Warren. So personally, I like all of those methods, so I'm going to combine them all in one and I hope that this would be the best method for you. We're going to work together with this Google Sheet that I created, which is 100% free for you, so you can get that link in the description. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this Google Sheet budget plan. All of these are made up numbers, by the way. This is not how much I spend or make, so this is just purely an example. So you're going to start by calculating your monthly income. This includes all of your side hustles. If you don't have a fixed income every month, then put in the lowest income that you could get. Don't count those over time so that there are no surprises. With this Google Sheet, it will automatically add all the income that you put in there to get the total. So anything that is highlighted in gray means that there is a formula in there, so make sure to not touch those. After putting in your income, the sheet will also calculate your 50-30-20 strategy, which is pretty much a suggestion on how you should split your income. This means that 50% will be spent on needs, which is pretty much what you should prioritize, 30% on wants because you do want to have a life, and 20% on your savings. Obviously, for some people, this might not be reasonable, so you can always change your percentages depending on your situation. For example, you can change it to 70, 15, 15. If you do want to make those changes, though, make sure that you also do some edits on the formula. For example, if it says times 0.5 because it's 50%, then you have to change it to times 0.7 so that it's 70% off. To check if you did the formula correctly, your total will have to be the same as your total income. Just make sure that you do leave some percentage on your wants and savings because if you do spend 100% on your needs, then you are living paycheck to paycheck. If that is the case, then you may have to downgrade to some of your expenses. Let's say you're renting a home that is really expensive, then you may have to downgrade and move away somewhere cheaper. Now that you have calculated your needs, wants, and savings, you do have to match it to each of the total lists below. You will be filling these out. I categorize them by home, transportation, etc. But you can obviously add your own categories in here to make it your way. And I also place an asterisk next to the fixed expenses, which is the expenses that doesn't change in price every month. So this is how you can differentiate your fixed and variable expenses. If it matches the goal above, then that is great news. In my case, it is $10 lower than the goal, which is even better news because that means I get to save another $10. My wants matches the goal, which is great. My savings though is much higher than the goal, so I would have to decrease some of its amounts so that it will be equal or lower than the goal. I like to add a just-in-case category on each of them. This is just in case for some emergencies. Let's say that you need any kind of repairs at home, or maybe one of your friends spontaneously asks you to go to one of these concerts that you really wanted to go to. So this is where you would get your money at. If you don't spend this money, then you can have more leftover money and you can decide where you want to put this money at. I would suggest to have the leftover money anywhere on your far right column of your spreadsheet. On the top right column, this is where you make sure that you are on top of your obligations. For credit cards, you want to pay that off immediately because you don't want to pay unnecessary interest to the bank. Then things like student loans, which you can pay monthly depending on your agreements. So I would add those on the needs for fixed expenses. So with this table formula, you can easily see how much money you still owe. Then you also want to have some financial goals for larger expenses. You can choose to pay monthly. I put the travel and laptop under once to pay 200 monthly. You can keep adding 200 on the table above until the difference is zero, which means you can finally take that vacation. That's pretty much it. I hope that this can help you track your spending habits and grow your savings. Thank you so much for watching and I do hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.